Are you guys ready to do this? All right, look, happy to be back. Sorry, last week was just crazy. Weather all around, everything went psycho. But what I want to do right now is we want to dive into this interview because I have something that I think a whole bunch of you guys are going to like. So just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you're properly following the podcast, wherever your podcast getting is got. Matter of fact, this was going to be exciting. So I got to, you know, peel the jacket. Um, if you have questions, drop them down in the question section below. We'll either save, depending on how the interview flows, get it? Um, wait, I'm stuck. We'll do Q&A at the end, or maybe I'll take them in the middle if it, you know, rides with what we're talking about. And other than that, you guys know what to do. So make sure you say hello to each other. Make sure everybody's, uh, you know, in the building, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Today, we brought a special guest along. So let me do the countdown real quick so we can kick off the beginning, and we'll call this a day. All right. <clears throat> got my <clears throat> with me. here we go counting it down in five four aloha flow riders and welcome to this edition of the flow today the flow is so go i am flowing solo well kinda actually luis is still in the back recording everything and we have a very special guest coming to kick it with us today we are bringing philip from sound sound.io fam you're going to want to hang on tight to your seats this is cool you know me i'm a stickler about audio and this is kind of crazy so without further ado let's bring on mr philip i'm going to mess up his last name uh caesar like in the salad or is it says you got it hey yeah nice nice to be here doc um yeah it's philip caesar um it's a pleasure yes. yeah to be guest today um <laughs> I'm excited for the next yeah hour. Bro, so first of all, before we go deep into the app, like how did you get your start in audio? I got forced into it because my dad was a, a commercial producer uh, with audio and video. And back in the day, you remember like you always had to record the audio separate from the cameras because camera audio was not really good, still kind of not really good. So my dad was like, here's a tape recorder. Remember Nagra tape recorders? <laughs> He's yep. like, here's a recorder. Here's a stick with a mic on it. Don't mess this up. That's how I got into audio. <laughs> and then I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> yeah, well, the way I got into audio is um, I, I created a startup. I founded a startup which was focusing on video conferencing and scaling it. Um, that's about 10 years ago. And back then, there was no audio video support in the browsers. Um, Chrome was one of the first browsers who created a draft, a spec, you know, to allow capturing audio video devices right in the browser. And that's where the idea was born that you can have audio video communications right in the browser. And we focused on scaling that, that the original design was meant just on one-on-one. -on -one. Like if you remember back the days with Skype, uh, where you were just uh, able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. The draft initially was also peer-to-peer, -peer, so just one-on-one -on -one conversations in the browser. And we started building backend infrastructure that it can scale, that you can have 100, 200 people in the same in the same conference. Um, now, you know, we, we all know all browser support, audio video capturing. Uh, we've seen tons of applications, video conferencing applications, where you can bring hundreds of people uh, even to, to what we're doing right now, broadcasting it. Um, and so I, I always stick with the audio video processing part. Um, the startup I co-founded um, previous took sound. It's called Wheelo. It's still around. It's, um, it's an app for Zoom. It's also, uh, if you, if you uh, run Zoom, if you have a Zoom license, you get Wheelo for free. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, an app for visualizing the breakouts in Zoom. Um, and we've also built a web version back then, and we also had to struggle, you know, with audio processing. So that's the background where I, you know, worked on audio video conferencing technology. Um, and a couple of years ago, started, you know, working on audio processing to remove background noise. Um, and the challenging, if you do it in real time, like what we're doing right now, it, it's a different approach. Um, to enhance audio for a live conversation rather than if you are into post-production where latency doesn't matter. Here, you know, right. every few milliseconds are important. 
But if you're in post-production, you know, you can have all sorts of different machine learning models and the, the latency is actually not important anymore. And that's where, you know, the idea started, okay, you can take those learnings and apply those machine learning models to post-processing. That's my story, how I got into I, I I like it. Well, especially, you know, one of the things that we run into with everyone doing their recording is everyone. Um, now we're teaching people to record the podcast live like we're doing now, but then take a version of that, pull it down, clean it up, and then either put the video back on YouTube, open as a public, you know, uh, playlist that now becomes a YouTube podcast on the playlist. And then strip the audio version out and send that audio version to your favorite podcasting host, in our case, Captivate. So that way you can do the traditional Apple podcast track because, well, that's the best way to do it. And I think a lot of people don't understand that polishing it up once you split it out is actually uh, before it used to be extremely difficult. If you weren't like me and you know how to go into your favorite audio editing app and normalize things and compress things and eq things but then you come along and it's like no man we're gonna make this even easier so even paul duncan can do it <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about sal because to me i was immediately blown away people i just threw on a file today and when i saw what happened i was like oh my god this is cool you guys are gonna love this because currently other ways to do this are a little bit more complicated than the way sound does it. So let's go in, let's take a look. All right, first thing you guys need to know is that I'm gonna put a link in the description for you because if you're an Ecamm fam, of course you know we came with the special and Phil was nice enough to give us a special. So if you guys wanna follow along, I just dropped the link into the chat and then that way Mr. Moderator can have it ready for his, uh, reproduction but uh basically yeah you want to go to uh x o u n d dot i o that's the answer and if you click the link that we gave you then that sets you up for the ecamm spam spam ecamm special <laughs> all right all right louise let's take a look at the sound interface boom all so right cool so as i mentioned um i i wanted to address you know common audio issues right in particular recording issues um, where sometimes your recordings, you know, are not in the best environment. They can happen outdoors. Uh, they can happen in a, you know, in an environment where you just don't have, you know, the best um, hardware running it. The room is, you know, either too large, too tiny. You have to deal with echo. Um, and sound, you know, deals and, and takes care that even with not the best professional setup, you can still um, process audio and enhance it that it, you know, will get to studio, professional studio quality. And the way it works is, as you see on the website here, there are actually, you know, um, sample videos with the enhanced version, with the original version, uh, you can play and, and listen to them. But I, I think that the really awesome thing and the neat thing about sound is that it does everything locally on your machine. So it's a machine learning model what runs on your browser. Um, nowadays, you can you know, package those machine learning models. And there's a technology called WebAssembly that allows you to process um, media files and applications right in the browser. Um, and that means you can you know, take any of your media files, audio, video, um, and provide it to Xon. And I'll just give you an example here, um, here with dinner for one. Um, and this, you know, is not going to be uploaded to a server. Um, this just stays on your machine. And what you can do in here, both for audio and video, you can say you either process the entire file or you want to just process a certain segment of the file. And let me just hit the process button. So now it takes the segment right here, what you see, and it will you know, remove the background noise, remove any echo, but it also does pitch um, correction. So that means <coughs> for a second that it, um, you know, adjusts your pitch, your, your voice in a way where um, certain frequencies, you know, are being enhanced, where you have clearer voice, lower frequencies, you know, you have a, a better ba bass uh, for, for you know, warmer voice. Um, so that's also part of the machine learning model. Um, 
now that it's processed, you can see it in red in here. These, these, this is the part, you know, what, what got enhanced. Um, what it also does is um, normalization. Um, I've often seen that people upload, you know, media content to channels like YouTube or Instagram, and the the sound, um, the audio line is not normalized. That means, you know, um, sometimes you have very loud um, noises. Sometimes it's very quiet, and um, you don't want the listener to adjust um, their volume levels all the time. Correct. This is actually not AI, but it's something I've seen over and over now that it's it's a common problem that um, the audio levels are not um, normalized. And there's a panel you know where, really, where it really comes in crazy to me all the time. If you're watching, okay, like, so, like, I love football as in round, um, favorite team, Manchester United, but, like, I'll be watching some football coverage, and they'll have the same exact ESPN FC, and they have reporters, like, in three different places, and each one, you know, the segment producer, sometimes it's just that reporter, sometimes they have an intern, and the ones that are smart enough to fix the audio, they send it to YouTube at that proper, like, negative 16 luffs. The other guys, yep. they just upload the file. So you're watching the exact same, you know, clips from the same game, and one of them will come in. Okay, we're live from the field. We're going to be interviewing Philip, and the other one sounds like now, and it's like I can't hear that. So I'm in the TV or the phone trying to crank it up, and even at the you know loudest, you can't hear it. And then as YouTube plays the next video automatically, it's like bra. <laughs> so please, please, people, fix your sound. It's really obnoxious to the to the listener, viewer, listener, whatever one of those guys <laughs> agree and and actually it's just one click uh, you know it, it doesn't even have to be the sound software a lot of the tools out there you know support the loudness normalization i think it's even it became a standard uh, you know how you process the the algorithm the methodology around it um so yeah it's a you know i i built it in just because i've seen so much feedback and, and struggle people had that the volume was jumping up and down that i said okay i'll just you know make it part of the at the at part of the application. Brilliant. Um, coming back now, we have the processed uh, oh, the video in here, and you have actually you know the enhanced version where you can toggle um, between back and forth the original version and then the enhanced version, and um, you know that that gives you just a live preview on how the enhanced version will sound, how it hopefully you know improved your original audio file. Um, and then when you're done, you can just click Save to Disk, um, and you're you're finished with the enhancement part. There are um, you know tweaks. You can set the noise removal strength. I've seen you know um, content creators who like some you know amount of background noise, like capturing from the from the woods, like bird noises and so on. Um, so you can adjust it how much of the background noise you know you want to keep in there. Or you know, sometimes you just want to get rid of all of it. That's cool. Sometimes you know, um, when you remove too much of the background noise, it almost sounds underwater. So yeah, it's cool to have a slider in there so you can at least uh, leave some of the ambiance in there, right? It'd be really f weird if you're at a conference and everybody knows there's a thousand people walking around, but you're like almost dead silent. That won't make sense to your eyes either. Super cool. And it's just that simple. Like I, I'm still blown away because I'm I've been uploading files to get fixed for going on 15 years. I'm blown away by how quickly you can actually see what's going on. And because it's in a web browser, here's a question. Oftentimes I do a reel or a TikTok. And me personally, I again, that's another place where you hear people with bad audio. So I have been you know, I have a uh, shortcut on my iOS device that's designed to strip the audio out and save it, you know, basically um, using like the built-in UU binary that's in the, the iOS app, save it in the files, then I upload that file to get fixed. And then I take the fixed one, download it, then I got to open back up my editing program on my phone and then stick the two back together. Are you able to upload from a phone as well? Being that it's a browser, that's that's a really good question. Yeah, um, I I made a choice um, because you know this this application you know as I said it runs it runs locally on your device. 
Um, desktop devices are powerful. They can run those machine learnings and do the enhancement. On a smartphone, it's tricky because it takes a lot more time. And as we know, the app has to like stay open or you know, the, the web browser has to stay open. Um, and and on, on smartphones, you know, we often just don't have the time to keep it open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as I said, it, unfortunately, smartphones are you know not as fast as those desktop devices. Um, and then you get so, a call in the middle and screw everything up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, what I've done right now, um, you know, having a choice, building apps um, where you process the audio files and media files. Um, as an alternative, I created a WhatsApp integration, a WhatsApp bot. Um, so what that means is, you know, if do you, have you have you used WhatsApp? Um, oh, yes. And I know in like in Europe, in Europe or Asia, it's it's uh, has a lot more market share. I think in, in the US it's gain, it's growing for sure. Um, from what I read, you know, iMessage is still, you know, more, more popular, but um, let me just ask do you have experience with whatsapp um yeah because i i'm in japan probably two months out of the year if i add up yeah. you know the two weeks at a time that i go like four times a year i average about two months a year in japan so it's pretty normal great um so i created a bot in whatsapp it's just like one of your contacts you can add to whatsapp and you can chat with that bot and provide your media files. So just right from your phone, you can provide your audio or video files. And um, the bot uh, in WhatsApp will process those files. And you know, after a couple of seconds, we'll turn them back as an, the, the enhanced version. Um, that's how I solved it right now, you know, that you can process files on a, on a phone. That's actually <laughs> That's brilliant as well. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I mean, that works. It, it, as long as, you know, there's a possibility. Um, but, you know, nowadays, the amount of content that you have to create in order to promote your business or, you know, just stay relevant is important. So having a place, to have a way to do it, even without nine times out of 10, my computer is with me anyway, just because it's so small and fast. Like I just, I just enjoy having it. It's not like we're slugging that 17 inch MacBook around anymore. <laughs> yep. So that's super cool. All right. Let's take a listen to, um, the, the enhanced version. Let's, let's hear how you made it sound. I'm actually curious. All right. Let me, let me just actually go over here and, uh, go here on, because I went back to present the, um, yeah, oh, this way. one is a good one. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth, um, speech. There's a, Famous historic speech in there. Um, I shall look back. Let me just with... check in here. You're hopefully able to hear the audio because you know with yes, the screencast. We, we can. Great. All right. So let me take your. Uh, let's take you like thirty seconds and then enhance this part. This is the original speech, and there's a lot of echo in there. Um, a lot of background noise. Um, and it's kind of hard to, you know, follow. I, I had challenges following, you know, her speech. Um, so let, let's wait till the processing is finished. And again, this all happens on my machine. It will not, you know, be uploaded to a server. All right. So what it does, it, you know, it takes out the audio line, um, what you shared before you experience. Um, on you know um, separating audio and video, it takes out the the audio line and the audio track, enhances those parts, and then you know puts them back together. That's just what you see when it says loading assets, where it merges back you know audio and video together. And it's so right. quick. <laughs> Let me play it here. Thank you also for inviting representatives of so many organizations with which I and my family the original have special version, connections. Now, let me jump right here. This of the border. Version. This is a real gathering of the clans. 1992 is not a year on which I should I put myself here in low volume. I, just, I didn't want to distract the recording, um, the, the uh, podcast here. Words, but hopefully you can hear the difference. You know, this speech now should not can. have you know, the echo of the background noise, for, uh, you know, compared to the original version. Yes, you can absolutely hear the difference. That is crazy. Now, now our moderator, Paul, had a very good question. Paul wanted to know, can you just give it an audio file too?
Oh, I might have lost you. Let's see. I'm not hearing you anymore. Can you give it just an audio file? Let me wait till you doc till you come back. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear me. I'm here. Now you're back. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. Sorry, I, I, please repeat the question. Paul had a, your moderator had a question. Can you please? Yeah, repeat he had a question. He wanted to know: Can you just feed it an audio file too, or do you have to send it a video file? No, no. Of course, it can also just be a, an, an audio file that works as well. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Th this is actually another example here uh, of an audio file that you can see an audio example here. Um, I, what, I like, what I like about this down. is the simplicity of the interface. Yeah, I'll give you an audio file. Let me just bring up in. A good looking widget is essential for the conversion. That's how it looks like with an, with an audio file. Um, let me also just run the processing. This should be fairly quick just because it's seven seconds. A good looking yeah. widget is a widget is essential for the essential for the conversion. Also, it also it has to fit your corporate your corporate identity. All it. right, here we go. That's how you process the audio file. Love it. So, super Paul give you the thumbs up. <laughs> that is super cool. Again, the simplicity of it is good because I think a lot of people, when they see some of the options that are out there available for them, they get scared by the amount of buttons that one would have to press in order to get the answer that they want. And that sort of freaks them out, right? I think it's really cool that you're simplifying it, you're making it accessible for someone who's maybe uh, a little terrified of what the other options might be. And they just throw the file in there, select background noise level and, and call it a day. So that's super amazing. Yeah, I think that's also, you know, where AI and particular machine learning models can help because they can detect what type of content it is. And because, you know, they're different, like distinct use cases, a podcaster, you know, operates often in a studio where background noise removal is not as important. Uh, it's more important to, you know, remove filler words, mouth noises, uh, you know, silence um, areas. Um, and while, you know, like content creators, especially when they're outdoor, when they're creating content for TikTok and Instagram, um, they have to deal with, you know, uh, environments with background noise. And they have just a short clip often where, you know, they, they prepare for it. There are not as many, you know, filler words like um and silence and so on. Um, so that's that's a different use case. But I think what's, what's so um, interesting and fascinating about those machine learning models is that they can detect what type of content it, it is. Like similar as you hear, you know, the machine learning model detects it's 90%, 93% speech, 3% silence. It knows that, it's, that this recording happened in the small room because then you, you know, like you don't need all those tweaks and options um, to get it right for you. The machine learning model, you know, can optimize it, you know, based on what type of, you know, audio or video you're producing. Correct. Correct. And um, yeah, I just wanted to point out, uh, somebody mentioned or uh, video like a dad mentioned that, you know, the audio come down. Sometimes when you put in a file, you're actually hotter than you want to deliver that file. And so the machine learning is smart enough to bring it back into a level that's going to work. But also, all of this repair work, as magic as it is, you also cannot just completely just make up things whole cloth right now. So sometimes in order to get the room level in check, you do have to bring the audio down. And that's always been when we do it manually. That has always been one of the challenges when you get stuck in a decision between going for, this is so crazy. I'm gonna confuse people. I'm gonna try not to. There is a massive difference between level, gain, volume, and loudness. There are three different things to the general common person. It sounds like the same thing. How big is it? That's not really the truth, right? <laughs> so le level, gain, volume, and loudness are all different. and when you're working in a loudness model you're going for the entire overall right 
So that's from the lowest low to the highest high in any background noise. You're getting an overall picture. When we say loudness, we're talking about K-weight. That's, yeah. So sometimes you do have to bring down the the gain of a particular clip in order to get it into proper loudness levels. So don't don't be confused just because the meters go down. And in some cases, when you drop it back in your editor, you might be able to give it a little bit of more gain and and not break it. Oftentimes you can't. It just really depends on the source file. Right. I hope that makes yeah. sense. And I, it made sense to me, <laughs> but I, I feel bad because I've been doing it for so long. It's really hard to explain some of this, but I've definitely been in a situation where we're filming and, you know, before the lens caps, everybody had a string on the lens cap. You notice nowadays camera manufacturers don't do that anymore because you would disconnect this and it's hanging there and the wind blows and all you hear is. And, and your whole recording because the wind's blowing the lens cap against it. Now we just let people lose lens caps because it's so much better than getting yelled at about this clicking sound throughout their entire audio clip. And those are super hard to repair because every I did click know that. That's, in the, that's really interesting. Yeah. Right. If you remember the old school days, lens cap always had a string on it. And everybody just got so mad because I was recording this wedding. And right when they're giving the speech, all you hear is clicking and I can't take it out. And the best audio tools back in the day were, you know, 250 grand and required a silicon graphics machine. And so now everybody's just like, I'll resell you a $2 lens cap, but I'm not going to get yelled at about your bad audio. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I had another interesting learning just yesterday. Um, they talked to a podcaster and uh, he, he shared a, a study with me that according to that study, 20 five percent of podcast listeners um use you know 1.2 1.5 or two times the speed to playback um and that's interesting because you know if you listen uh, to that playback in that much in, in, you know in that, in that, that speed um the the audio will really suffer where i'm like okay you, you can have the best you know audio enhancement and all that but um yeah, the right now, you know, the applications are not really specialized or, you know, allow better audio quality if you have the fast play function. Um, and um, I, I was just surprised to hear if it's is it really that much 25% of, you know, people listening to podcasts play it, you know, faster than the original version. Yes, it's funny. And you're right about okay so there's some apps that will do a voice enhance and they're basically trying to do what you do but they're doing yeah. it um the way we did it on a on a uh say like a nakamichi eq back in the day right you would just yeah. do a little you know what the frequencies are for the general voice they just kind of pick those up and it's designed because they know that many podcasters don't have necessary good audio. So they try to make it easier for you in your car to be able to hear this. And they take into account what the outside frequencies are probably like, but you're right. The minute you go to like 1.5, 1.2 or 1.5, none of that stuff works because they can't do both of those calculations at the same time. What's funny is somebody told people that for productivity, if you were crank the speed up, you can listen to more podcasts. And I'm like, but can you really like you might hear every word, but I guarantee your comprehension suffers a little bit. But even that said, I listen to 1.5 all the time, especially when you talk, listen to people who talk slow. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm laughing because Luis, our producer, put in 1.5 to 2 as well. as because both he and I are native Spanish speakers. And our culture, we speak fast, and the rest of the world speaks hella slow. So to us, a yeah. 1.5 is a say a German one, <laughs> you know. Yep. And then in when I'm in Japan, I like the the West side or basically Osaka side. Osaka spe people speak twice as fast as Tokyo people. So even if I'm listening to stuff in Japanese made by a Tokyo person, I'll crank it up because my brain is just used to hearing it quicker. <laughs> so I, maybe that's true. <laughs> Well, and sometimes it's, you know, just your estimated time of arrival when you when you're in the car and, you know, you have 20 minutes. This podcast takes 30 minutes. Yeah, that's the way to go. Um, I, I get it. Yeah. So, you know, what's curious is uh, now I noticed in one of your um, 
your things you have on here is the, the natural pitch correction. Could you explain that a little bit more? Like, I'm super intrigued by that. Well, um, the idea came from, it's, it's also a company, I think I'm based in Munich, Germany, and the company is called Melondine, uh, Melodyne, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and, you know, they, they're used by artists, you know, in the music industry to, you know, where you can manually um, adjust the, the pitch um, in an editor um, that, you know, it, it perfectly matches, you know, the song tones um, um, to the music. Um, it's it's a little bit like autotune, but I personally feel like autotune, sometimes it just, the voice oh, sounds God. too yes, It sounds too processed, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think with Melodyne, it's it's a nice balance that it doesn't sound too processed, but um, it, it really, you know, matches up the right, the, the, the vocals uh, matches up the, the music, how do you say, the music tones. Um, and with the pitch correction, the machine learning model, you know, what it was trained on, you know, was trained on professional speakers where their voice, you know, also um, articulates certain words, sentences in a way we, you know, um, uh, receive as um, clear and and uh, appealing their sound and their voice. Um, so to a certain degree, that machine learning model does the same with your voice that it adjusts the pitch slightly. I think it's it's important really to you know, keep the characteristics, you know, the original voice that it's not someone else. Um, that's, I think, really, I'm still struggling, like, with the voice cloning applications out there. I've not seen one where you, like, you you, you, you have a proper voice clone and you really say, yeah, that's my voice. Um, no, you can, so and you're right. How you can normally tell is pitch inflictions and... Yeah oftentimes the spacing that natural spacing between a, a thought or finishing a sentence or the excitement level change in the sentence now this is going to sound crazy so we're, we're we're talking say we're talking about a football match and you know we're, we're man you Bayern munich happening we just got annihilated uh, but in the middle of that conversation you get to part of the of the story and you go to talk about uh, a tackle or a shot, you will lift up a little bit in excitement because that's the action part of the statement and then it'll drop back. And it's super subtle if you listen to people when people talk. None of the AI stuff can pull that off. So you can always tell and it's not because it, people says it sounds robotic. Audibly it doesn't sound robotic, but emotionally it sounds robotic and that's how you can tell unless you just have a friend like Paul Duncan who talks like that all the time. <laughs> but normally there's a little bit of like, you know, the pace picks up a little bit or there's some like tightening. Yeah, it's hard to describe, you know, but I can hear it. I can hear it right away. I can always tell. I don't know how people get fooled by deep fakes. I really don't. Yeah. I, I, just, I can tell all of them. And I'm waiting for someone to play me one and I want to be fooled because right now I can spot them. Like, yeah. I, I think those characteristics, they matter a lot, you know, as you, as you mentioned, like the high pitches or people express their emotions. Um, and I've not seen a machine learning model, which, you know, can can capture that quite well. Um, so, you know, back to your question, the pitch correction happens at a, you know, at a small amount of level um, with the adjustments. Um, I, I try to really balance it that I don't, you know, lose the original voice and people can still tell and say, this is my voice um, and not some 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 s synthetic, you know, computer voice. That's super cool. Well, and again, that's how you often, a, I know as a person who speaks, you know, multiple languages, the one dead giveaway from someone who speaks it all the time is there's always... Okay, say maybe socially there's an infliction on a word that the foreign person just can't do because it's more than just the word has a meaning. The entire societal or cultural background behind it also means something else. So when you yeah. say it, you might be able to repeat it phonetically. You might be able to, uh, you know, just hit all the right levels, but you are missing a little style in that word, right? So they're just, no matter how much you study, you're not going to get it. And when one of the reasons why people ask me, like, how long did you study Japanese? And I'm like, well, technically only a year in college. 
And they're like, but you're so fluent. And that's because I went deep on the culture side in order to learn the language. I didn't just learn how to repeat words. I can repeat words in German. That's why I sound like crap. <laughs> but culturally, <laughs> like, you know, I can do like Nix with Stalin Deutsch or, or uh, Viget, Viget, Ab, Viget Abhama like that. I can say weird stuff like that. I don't really understand the cultural statements behind them. So it doesn't, it probably like, Doc, that was the worst German I ever heard. Yeah, I accept that. But like in Japan, because I studied the culture first, I don't have an American speaking Japanese accent. And that freaks people out. They're like, how the hell did you do that? And I'm like, because it's just the culture. If you understand the culture, you understand where the words come from. And then there is a different way you let that roll off your tongue. So natural speech is super important. And a lot of the things that make it sound better technically ruin that. And that's always been a challenge as a person trying to edit a podcast. Is like, I don't want to take away this person's feeling, but if I over compress it, you can kill the feeling by over compressing it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that, you know, it's a big difference, you know, why, you know, I, I hope podcasts um, with, you know, original voices, human voices will still be around for a long time uh, because I enjoy, you know, I, I personally enjoy these expressions, you know, the different levels of pitches in the voice, um, when people like laugh, when they're getting angry, when they make a joke. Um, and, and I, yeah, we'll see, you know, with the development of AI, how fast the machine learning models will, you know, able to, to even make up for that and, and, um, simulate that who knows. Um, but hopefully we're, we're not getting replaced too soon. <laughs> No, not the, the the best uh AI app opportunity would be uh some sort of uh significant other translator <laughs> so that when, when they say stuff, we actually know what they mean instead of we're supposed to guess. If you can figure that out, Phil, you'll be rich. <laughs> which which is Man, you know, there are apps now apps for translation. Like you can you can upload your podcast, you know, including video. And then, you know, applications, I've, I've seen a couple of applications, they translate it into another, whatever language you want. Um, and they try to match the lip sync. Um, but it's still awkward, those, especially those, when, those you're laughing, when you're laughing, know, <laughs> when you're in a good mood, when your expression, you know, you, you have emotions. Um, yeah, those, those, you know, the lip sync then just fails and it's not able to capture that. Have you, have you checked out some of the, um, the new, sort of auto translation from meta and you know i could for me right now their translations in the japanese or korean are pretty horrible <laughs> um okay. and those are harder languages to do because i can't speak to a person one year older than me the same way i can speak to one person a person that's younger than me so for instance if i were speaking korean my conversation to paul would be completely different from my conversation to luis even though we're all best friends in English in, in those languages, I have to give Paul more respect because he's almost yeah. 80 and you know, those models, do, not really, those models don't know how to do that. What is your, what is your take on some of these auto translation models as a person who's multilingual? Um, I'm always impressed, you know, with those models in English. And I, I guess, you know, that's one of the like, you know, broadest markets out there uh, where research happens, um, where our business opportunities are. Um, because when I compare it like to German, um, in particular to the Southern parts where you have different accents, um, I have not seen support, like in, in English now you can, you know, choose um, those auto translators. You can say you want a, a Californian accent, you want to have, a, you know, a, southwestern accent and so on um for german i have not seen that and they're quite believe me there are a lot of different accents you know in in the southern part um which um yeah which which is not supported so i'm i'm and i'm not a native speaker in, in english so um that means i'm always impressed when i see you know um translation apps, um, you know, text to speech, speech recognition and all that. It's for me, that's seems to work pretty well. Um, 
but when it comes to German, I still, you know, I, I still think it's it's not uh, at the same level compared to to English. Dude, that's crazy. I was uh, I was in Stuttgart, and yeah. my best friend is from Koblenz, and the other one's from Munich. So even for them, when they're talking to each other, I can hear the difference. You know what I mean? But the kid that kind of grew up in Munich, his dad was also army. So his is more flat. Whereas Patrice, when Patrice goes, the Koblenz just has a very distinct uh, pitch, especially when it comes to excitement. And I have no idea what they're talking about, but I can just hear the inflictions, you know? And I don't yeah. know, where did, where did you study your English? Because your, your English is actually phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I went to high school for one year in Wisconsin. That was back in 2004. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was interesting because, you know, I, I did the school exchange and they like in their advertisement, they said, you got to go to Hawaii or California or New York. And then when, you know, a uh, house family picked me and I got this letter where, you know, I, I got to learn about my destination. Wisconsin? What's what's that? <laughs> Dude, you definitely should have picked Hawaii. See, then you would have you would have been listen, at least listened to me on the radio. You would have known who I was already. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is you 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 can't pick. Um a lot of those exchange programs, the way they work, they, they don't pick the desk like they match the yeah. families where they say, you know, you you have the best match with the host family. Um by the way, it was it was great. Wisconsin is great, I loved it. Um that's you know where I I got to improve my English a little bit um, in two thousand. And you get good. You get the world's best cheese. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that was one of the first stories I I got told. You know these, these cheese hats. Um, I I guess it's a rumor, but someone told me there was a plane accident and um, someone you know survived because he was wearing that cheese hat. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering they just won a big game uh, yesterday to beat the Cowboys, or the day before yesterday, uh, I don't know, everybody's buying cheese hats now. <laughs> so, man, that is so crazy. Phil, this has been awesome. I can't wait to play with it some more. Um, I know that this is going to come in handy. Luis and I are about to go to PodFest uh, with Katie, so we're going to be doing a lot of recording out in the field. So being able to run back to the hotel, polish the sound real quick and then send the video on phenomenal like absolutely phenomenal like i'm down and i tell you what if if i'm willing i can't wait to play with the whatsapp side of it too because i know for a fact i'll be making a lot of short form content so being able to fix that will be just incredible don't forget guys you can absolutely Hit that link. Paul posted it recently in the chat. So hit that link so that way you can get the Ecamm fan special and, you know, support support Phil. There's a lot of options out there, but I'm going to say support Phil because, you know, he's cool. As, as they oh, say in Germany, thank you. he's, awesome. he's hot. <laughs> by the way, this is like a, an indie project. It's pretty much just me. Um, there's not a big corporation behind and so on. And it's, yeah, it's I think it's also just learning, you know, applying some machine learning models to the feedback from the community from you know they're great people i work with um they provide me great feedback and i think there's a big opportunity on you know matching their their feedback their requirements their ideas with you know machine learning models man super this is super cool i i just like the fact that you took a problem and like i can see where this can help people so let me just attack this and that's how the best stuff is made you know that's literally how we got Ecamm. Ken and Glenn was like, Facebook is is making video and this is way too complicated. Let's come up with a way to make it easy for people who want to stream to Facebook, do it. And next thing you know, we got this cool app in the big community and, you know, all these people that we call the Ecamm fam. Literally just from somebody wanting to solve a very simple problem, more or less, you know, to make it easier for other people. So I, I think that's built into the DNA. And I knew that our companies would match because that's our company saying we want to stay small. We want to stay nimble and sort of family oriented, you know, kind of situation. And so, yeah, it's cool. Welcome to the Ecamm fan, Phil. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> can't, can't wait cannot wait to get a chance to just hang out with you and then uh we can we can talk story about cheese <laughs> that's my favorite thing in the world <laughs> and uh, um i'm gonna have to hit you up for a recipe for kiss pencil because my friend makes it for me and he won't tell me how to do it and i've seen the youtube videos it looks simple but i've tasted differences between good ones and bad ones so it's not as simple as the ingredients make it seem like <laughs> yeah i i should improve my my Käsespätzle skills um they're not uh, i i think <laughs> i think i i actually i i'm good in cooking soups um i'm really into soups uh oh, also like soup. a, a very uh, soup uh, it's called grease grease knockle grease knockle soup um you know next time we'll see maybe maybe i i have better Käsespätzle skills uh, okay <laughs> that works yo it's seriously one of the best things in the world don't confuse it it's not macaroni and cheese it's way better if you get a chance get in there fam this podcast is brought to you by our friends over at captivate captivate helps us put this together and it's just the greatest platform out there. It's very simple. It's very easy. All you really have to do is upload your file after you sent it to sound, upload your file, and it will send it to all of the podcast getting places wherever that podcast getting is got. We also have a brand new page available. If you go to flow.ecam.com, you will see that it's sitting on Pi page, which means you can leave us a voicemail. And man, we've had the opportunity to get some voicemails. We will get those read out for you coming up soon. But you can drop us a voicemail. You can get all the episodes. You can leave feedback. So all of that part is there. So make sure you go to flow that flow dot and that will lead you to wherever your podcast getting is got. It's just been an amazing episode. And Phil, appreciate you. Make sure you guys check it out. It's I'm gonna mess this up. X. O U N D dot I O. I did it. I think I did it. <laughs> if not, Paul, I'll give you the link in the bottom. You got to go check it out. This has been fantastic. I want to say goodbye to everybody in our listening audience, the people that are here for the live taping. Stick around if you have a question, drop it in real quick before we roll. And we'll see you guys next week. Flow Riders out. Mm -hmm.